Hey bike farmers, thanks for clicking back in. Here we are with our next bike project. This is a bike I sold a few years back to one of the local kids who rode the crap out of it. It is roached. This thing is toasty. Definitely new tires, probably a new chain. We gotta figure out this derailleur situation that's going on back here. The brake pads are good still. I don't know if I replaced them recently at some point. The saddle's in good shape. Uh, it's got a suspension seat post and nice upright handlebars. The shifter's broken. I think I'm gonna replace both shifters shifters. Yeah, sometimes these bikes are just a real gamble on whether or not I even want to take them back. But if they've got my stickers on them, I promise people take them all back and give them at least something for a trade-in. But when I take these back, it's like, oh boy, this is going to cost me some money to get it back up. But I plan on fixing it up and then reselling it and I'll discount the resale and um, it's going to be one of my cheaper ones. But it's a good size. It's a nice sturdy frame. It's got some decent parts on it still. The hubs feel pretty good. So I'll give you a closer look, a little zoom in on some of these things and then we'll get started. Yeah, this bike's in rough shape. We had a catastrophic event of some sort back here so who knows that chain's probably going to get replaced right i wonder if we've got any bent chain rings um the tire is completely bald brake pads look pretty good gonna have to grease that i might change that seat post out too i don't know we got nice upright bars however that shifter is blown up so probably just replace both shifters um i think i'm going to replace both tires too just because that one's going but the brake pads are still good so it's got that going for it but yeah that bike is worn out. Let's see what we can do. One of the absolute first things I do is grease the seat post. This is bone dry in here. So I just take a little bit of grease and a brush. This is a, a flex brush often used for plumbing. Anyway, kind of lube up the seat post and work it in or lube up the seat tube I suppose and work it in and that kind of prevents things from getting rusted shut in the future and then it's always a good idea to put a little tri-flow on the quick release that just kind of helps people in the future this bike has seen some rain in its day I'm gonna pull these wheels off There's my Midwestern accent for you. Disconnect the brake first. Disconnect the brake. We have to unscrew the front one a little bit because it's got these little tabs on the end of the fork. It'll hold it in. We call those lawyer lips. I'm gonna see if I can get this chain situated a little bit better. Oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna win this battle. That's wrapped around. Nope, we're just gonna take it apart. So I'm just gonna pop one of the pins out.
There we go. Yeah, I actually think we can reuse this chain. Just set it aside for now. The bottom bracket feels pretty good. Those bearings feel smooth. All right, yeah, this bike's not so bad. Believe it or not, this hanger's gonna be bent. <laughs> well, it is bent. The nine millimeter will loosen up the anchor bolt and get that cable out of there. And then a five millimeter to take this derailleur out. Yeah, the things are pretty bent. So we'll get that straightened out. We can straighten that once we get the wheel back on. So we're going to be replacing the shifters, which means new cables. So we can pull this cable out. I'm going to save the housing. It's a three by seven system, so it's not really all that technical. It's not that finicky. Pretty sure we'll get it working just fine with that housing. Come around back here and we'll get this anchor out. Anchor bolt loosened. Cut the cable there and then pull it through. I'm gonna reuse these grips so I don't wanna cut them off. We're gonna use the compressed air to get them off. So I usually grab the little screwdriver, little flathead kind of work it underneath. Yeah, try to get... Get them off that way. Oh, there goes the shifter. I'm gonna... See if I can get under there without my screwdriver with this one. There you go, I win. Pop the shifters off. So this is still a good shifter. So set that aside. And then this is bad shifter for parts. And I'm just gonna throw this part away. But this thing has a little set screw in it that I might need someday. Generally take accessories off of used bikes that I'm gonna resell. And I don't like this plastic bottle holder on this bike. Bottle holders are a nice little throw in at the point of sale. Be like, hey, I'll throw in a bottle cage for you. Probably should have greased those. Probably still could. On this piece of cracked housing so I think we'll replace that and maybe a few others I don't know I think I'm just gonna replace the brake cable too it's really short on the anchor bolt. Here's the broken housing. Grab my brake housing here. So that actually looks pretty clean. You can take a sharpened spoke. Both sides look pretty clean. Uh, 
five millimeter brake ferrules out of the bins. Then lube the cable. I like TriFlow on my cables. It has been working great for me, so that's what I'm gonna do. I like TriFlow for everything. I'm gonna put some, I have some rubber donuts in a bin. Put those there. Just a little bit of lube. And that is slicker than snot on a doorknob. There. It's like new. I don't know what's what here. Oh, that kind of looks like it belongs there. Does this one belong here? Maybe. So these are some brand new micro shift replacement shifters. I like them. I think they have a good feel. Suave Max Hold Hairspray. The cheap stuff. Water soluble, light adhesive. These are these same old bar plugs. That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna get Cut some new housing for these uh, shifters, I think. Why not? Okay, I got my housing cut. Gonna put some ferrules on the housing here. Drop some tri flow on that cable there. Let's get these things in place. Hold these handlebars still. Okay, I'm gonna find some more wubby dubbies. The rubber donuts. Might as well replace these pieces of housing too. So this one seemed a little long to me. I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter by an inch or so. This one's just about right. Okay, this is the one I wanted to cut a little shorter. And this is the one that was just right. All the cables are done except for the front brake cable here. 
I guess all the cables are new except for this one too. But it feels really clean and in the spirit of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'll just lube it up a little bit. So I'm letting gravity pull the lube down into the cable system. That's real good. Feels excellent. And I'm gonna drop some lube in the pivots there. Well, we can't do much with that rear derailleur because the hanger's bent until we get this wheel sorted out. I think the first thing we wanna do is get this tire off here. So it feels like everything's sticking. It's a lot easier to get the tire off if you kind of break things free. Do your thing. Yeah, the tube is sticking to the inside of the tire. There's usually a tipping point. There it is. hit my shin. It's a hazardous job. Okay. So I think the first thing I want to do with this wheel is I'm going to start at the valve hole and I'm just going to put a couple of drops of lube on each nipple just because everything's so dry and possibly corroded. Doesn't look too bad. This will allow things to move more freely. We'll just go all the way around the wheel. So my thoughts are that centripetal force will draw the lube into the threads. A little bit of vibration to help agitate things. I don't know if any of that's real. It just kind of makes sense to me, so I do it. All right, this is a filthy-ish rag. Using a little bit of Dawn Power Wash here. in the spoke protector here. So we're gonna put a new one on. I'm gonna remove the axle nut. Grab the freewheel removal tool. Put it in the vise. Then the wheel goes on the tool. Then you go one, two, three. There we go. Okay, just kind of clean things off a little bit back there. You don't get that opportunity too often. Just gonna add a little grease to these threads. Spin it backwards a little bit, just catches the threads a little easier that way. 
don't think I've ever cross-threaded one. Okay. Let's do the front wheel quick here too. This one doesn't want to let the air out. What's going on with that? Valve core removal tool here. Put that in there and see if we can rescue this thing. Still no air coming out. What's that all about? Something's gooey in there. I don't know. Probably just a new tube, huh? We're replacing the tire too. Let's just poke a hole in it. Not exactly sure what's going on there. Never a dull moment at Gibbs Bike Shop. I'm gonna do the same thing with the front spokes. Go through and lube each one. some wheels so I start on this side and I take when it's hitting the tool I'm gonna loosen this one I'm either gonna loosen the spokes on the right side or tighten the ones on the left and I just kind of make the call when I find the points I do a lot of this by feel. It's really hard for me to explain it as I go. And you gotta know which, which ones to ignore and which ones to pay attention to. Because these, uh, these Weinman 519s are super popular rims, true to a million of them. They're pretty soft. You can usually get them really good. I mean, the brakes aren't going to rub, but they'll never be perfect. A couple new tires here, a couple new tubes. I always like to line my valve holes up with the logos. It's a fun noise. I'm a big fan of people falling asleep watching this stuff. Sleep through the ads.
I do do this as a little another another form of income for the shop and for my bike business. So I really appreciate you clicking in and watching. Oh, ah, it's gonna blow up. God damn it. It's blown off the rim right there. Woo. <laughs> That'll sell some ads. Man, that was scary. There. I didn't check the bead as I was inflating this because I was yapping. Almost blew myself up in the process. Putting a dab of lube on these axle nut threads here. Tires have a direction too. Some sort of tread that gives the indication of an arrow pointing forward. 26 by 2.1 tires are nice and beefy and round. They have a relatively supple sidewall to them and they give these old 90s mountain bikes a really good ride feel. All right, now let's take our time. We'll give this some shape and then we'll massage the bead into the hook of the rim before scaring ourselves half to death. I'm just looking for spots around the bead that look like it might be problematic. This one is not as problematic as that first one. Make them firm. That's what I say. I rode like 200 miles this last weekend and I didn't check my tire pressure once. I just felt them. I'm like, oh, they're firm. I'm going to go for a bike ride. Doesn't matter a whole lot to me. It's fun to optimize bicycles, but it's not necessary. Okay, back on the bike. Pop the wheels back on. I like to tighten this quick release down so it starts pushing back when the lever's sticking straight out 90 degrees from the plane of the wheel. And then I have my levers sticking straight back. And while I'm here, might as well reconnect the brake. It's actually very well adjusted. Okay, so with these axle nuts, I just tighten a little bit on each side at a time to keep them from spinning in the dropouts. And I really try to crank down on them. That's good. Now we can straighten that hanger. Here you can see just how bent it is. We're gonna get that totally straightened out. With the derailleur alignment gauge. That's this guy right here. And it threads in where the derailleur threads in. These threads are feeling a little grungy. I kind of feel like I'm chasing them right now. It, I can feel it when I remove the derailleur too. All right, I'm forcing things here. Hopefully I don't destroy this bike. That's the thing with these steel bikes is this is the only hanger we've got. All right, it's all the way through. So if I was chasing threads, it's got new ones. Ooh, ow. I don't know what just happened to my hand, but that felt weird. All right, I'm forcing things here. Hopefully I don't destroy this bike. That's the thing with these steel bikes is this is the only hanger we've got. All right, it's all the way through. 
So if I was chasing threads, it's got new ones. A little bit, that's pretty close. And then we check three and nine as well. And I already know that I gotta go this way a little bit. Okay. And then that way. And then I double check to make sure that that little adjustment didn't knock things off too much. There it is. Now, take the tool out and go find ourselves a derailleur. There you can see the nice straight derailleur hanger now. It's perfectly straight. Back in the pandemic times, I got a really hot deal on these unbranded sunlight rear derailleurs that basically look like the Shimano Altus derailleurs. They're made of metal and they, they work great. They're perfect for projects like this. And this is my very last one. Yeah, I can see it threading in all crooked. We'll see how well this goes. The threads are all messed up. All right, I'm not gonna crank on it much harder than that. That was pretty good. I think it's gonna work. There you have it. Good enough. Tighten that cable down. Pretty good. Yeah, get this rear brake hook back up. It feels pretty good. Cable's gonna stretch a little bit. Over here in front derailleur land, grab it with the pliers and then take a five millimeter wrench and anchor her down. I'm gonna take the crusty old chain we took off of it and put it back on. It's like tied in a knot. This is the end with the pin in it. And I want the pin pointing towards me because it's easier to work on on that side. And I usually put that through the front derailleur because the pin, when the pin is pushed through the link, it doesn't really play well with the rear derailleur cage. So then I'm gonna thread our chain through the rear derailleur. Hopefully this chain's still the right size with these, with this different derailleur. Okay, so I'm in little and little. Look at the rear derailleur cage over there. We just want to be pulling down a little bit. And then when I push this pin through, I left a little bit so I can just kind of put the chain together like that. And little over here, the front, and little in the back. Well, it's not quite little in the back, but that's little in the back. Looks to be good enough. Push the pin through. It's going smoothly. And I'm looking right in there to make sure that I just barely get it through. And I back it off. And I feel with my fingers and then you'll see it's a sticky link, right? So that's why I like these chain tools. So now I can go to this middle spot and I just push the pin through just a little bit, like just a smidge, get that moving a little bit. And then sometimes if you move it back and forth, that loosens it up. And it feels about the same on both sides. Then I take the aerosol can of Tri-Flow and lube the cable. Why is it shifting right there? 
Oh, do I have a bad link? It wouldn't surprise me. Oh man, I do have a bad link. Okay, new chain. And then of course, I don't have a mega range freewheel. Oh, look at that, the chain's the right length. Good for us. And quick links are way easier. Yeah, you just put together and then sometimes you can pop them that way. Otherwise I go like this and then like that. And there's the, the quick link. Right there. And the limits on that derailleur is pretty good. And the cable tension's right on. I'm still gonna manually stretch the cable. So grab the derailleur here, and then I'm grabbing the cable up on the top tube and just giving it a yank. And yeah, I mean, you can see I really stretched it out pretty good. You can see how much I stretched that cable up. So with that, I can pull out just with the barrel adjuster. A little tight. Spray this front derailleur around. Oh, something in the shifter or the derailleur or something shifted and we have a very, very loose cable. flow on things oh yeah you can see just by spraying it it was really good but it changes just a little bit still pretty good so there you have it even when these bikes are totally roached if you got the parts and you got the time and you got some skill you can bring them back to life like i think that this bike mechanically is just fine. It wouldn't be the bike I'd choose to ride across the country, <laughs> but if it was the only bike I had, it'd be just fine taking off forever on this bike. You know, the stuff is just gonna wear out just like any other bike. It's got a ton of gears, nice and upright. Fresh lube, fresh tune-up. It's getting all the gears. It's indexing properly. Check the pedals. So this bike I've uh, has already been through my shop once, and I think these brake pads, I don't know. I mean, I. Th it, it kind of feels like I've replaced these brake pads. So I think the bike's been in a couple times in my stands, either me or Alec or maybe Andrew. Somebody's been touching it. And the more you touch the bike, the more solid it becomes. So I'm gonna give this a bit of a test ride quick and see if we can get it to skip. Brakes aren't squeaking. Windy. All right, so I got it in the highest gear in back. I'm cross-chaining right now. I got it in the lowest gear in front. Oh, there's the brakes are squeaking. All right, we got a file off that rear rim. So I'm in the highest gear in back, the smallest cog. That's the one that's gonna wanna skip in probably. I right, hold down the brakes and I'm Pedaling hard. All right. Take care of those squeaky brakes, huh? Other than that, everything's shifting great. Chain's not skipping. Woo! 
Those are loud. It's windy. All right, get the bike back in the stand here. So to fix the squeaky brakes, take a bit of emery cloth here. Resurface the side of the rims here. You can just get emery cloth from the plumbing section at your hardware store and it'll work. And this happens because of the cleaning of the rims and all of that. Like this brake bike probably didn't have squeaky brakes before I tuned it up. And this just kind of cleans the rims the rest of the way on the side. And it doesn't always work. Perfect college bike, you know? Nobody's gonna wanna steal it. And it works better than the ones that they do steal. Giving these rims one more wipe. I think I like it. I think I like it a lot. Look at that. Pretty shiny. Okay, there's the finished product. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Brand new tires, brakes are all cleaned up. It's all pretty shiny. Brand new shifters. How about it? Bag it and tag it. Well, that just goes to show you, bike farmers, you can take a bike that has been totally trashed and what do we do? Replace a chain and a derailleur and some tires, some grips. I guess those grip shifters, but <laughs> I guess we did swap a whole bunch of parts out, but you know, this is a perfectly good bike that we were able to give a third life, I believe. I mean, I don't know how many lives it had before it got to me, but I fixed it up once, sold it to somebody, they used the crap out of it, gave it back to me, and now somebody else gets to enjoy it one more time. It's a perfect all-arounder college bike or commuter bike or something. I mean, mechanically, it's very sound. It's a sturdy bike. It's comfortable. It's got all the gears in the world. It's just super, super practical. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. You know what to do with the clicking. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, give it a like, all of that helps. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and with that, I'll see you next time.